Hello, students. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Hello, guys. Welcome to our English class. It's actually a great pleasure to be here with you. This beautiful night, I'm really sorry because there was a huge traffic. Honestly, I was like a little shame because I, I was like, you know what? Um, it's something that I didn't expect. But let me tell you that uh, for the next classes, there will be a, a new teacher who will join you in this process. And it's because I have a switch about schedule and it's going to be like kind of hard to, you know, to be part of this um, English course. But we will also continue working in some different schedules, guys. So I just want to, well, at the same time, encourage you to, you know, practice English because English is a very interesting. Nowadays, we have a lot of opportunities, you know, to study English. Let me show you something right now, guys. Okay, I have a material that I just want to explain to you that is very, very interesting. Also, also let me show you here and I will explain you um, some important details about this activity. And first of all, and I was, I was like speaking with, uh, with a, native, a native English speaker because you know I work with the native speakers. And one of the personal challenges for natives when they speak Spanish is that um, they, um, they have some difficulties to understand also some Salvadorian expressions. I always have said that in Spanish, Spanish is more difficult. The grammar in Spanish is more difficult than, than English grammar. English grammar is pretty, pretty easy. And at the same time, it's a little simple. I just recommend you guys to um, study. Uh, I know someone, um, conocí por ahí dentro de los americanos, había una, una americana que tenía tres años de estudiar español. Imagine, three years of studying, three years of studying Spanish. Y yo le pregunté, pues, que si sabía español, que si nos podría decir alguna expresión o algo. And she said that she studied like three years of Spanish and also... She, she said that it was a kind of hard to speak speak Spanish and also some expressions because of the accent. So it's easier for us to, you know, to learn to learn English than Spanish. Also, we know that it's even much better. So we feel also encouraged. I have a great topic to share, guys, and for this uh, beautiful nine. And this topic is about what we call in English the so comparative and superlatives. I will explain detail by detail this topic because it's actually very, very simple. And um, I just want to ask you, eh, ¿se acuerdan de los superlativos y los comparativos? ¿Se recuerdan? Yes, no, tell yes, me. No, yes, no, no, yes. Awesome. No. Excellent. Is right, it very smart? You know this topic, so me van a ayudar muchísimo a poder entender un poquito ese tema. And so uh, let me explain you this one. It says in this class, participants will learn new vocabulary related to geography. That's the topic that we will socialize in this class. And also we can see here in this slide, uh, also you have this information in the chat. We have leveled the pictures with words from the list. And we have the Vish. Do you like the Vish? Yes, I like. You like yes. it? What do you like about the Vish? I love it. What do, what do you like about the Vish? Tell me something interesting. Yes? Que le gusta de la playa? What do you like about the Vish? Hello? Hello, hello. I like eating fish. Okay, all right. What else? The sun, the sun, the beautiful, beautiful view. What do you like about um, the fish? The sun. Okay. Okay. okay, nice, nice, nice. Uh, do you like swimming, you know, or eating some fish, maybe? Yes? You like? like swimming. Ah, you like swimming. Ah, cool. Nice, nice. And also we have a, a desert 
forest, hill, island, lake, mountain. In this case, the pronunciation is mountain. I want you to practice with me. Say with me, mountain. 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 Yes, Jorge, you, you did it right. Good pronunciation is mountain. Mountain. Yes, mountain. That's the mountain. word. Okay. All right, so that's the last word. And um, also because people pronounce the word um, mountain, and that is not the pronunciation. A lot of people say, oh, teacher, go to the mount mountain. No, it's not mountain. It's mountain. Mount, mm, that's mountain. Okay, and also we have ocean, uh, ocean, river, valley. The next word is letter J, is valley, volcano, and waterfall. That's part of the geography. So you can see here uh, the, the geography words. And um, you see, look at that one. And um, do you have questions about the vocabulary? Uh, Vished, desert, forest, hill, island, lake, mountain, uh, ocean, and river. Check that part. So, what do you think? It's easy? It's easy or difficult, students? You know this vocabulary? ¿Conocen este vocabulario? Yes? Waterfall. El último, ¿cuál es? Oh, the last one. The last one is waterfall. Waterfall. In, in, in Spanish, it's like cascada. It's, it's cascada. That's the waterfall. Yes. And valley. I'm sorry? Valley. Valley. Ah, es como un valle. In English, it's valley. 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 It's, it's valle. Yeah. Valley. Yes, okay. that's right. What else is there? And D. Hill. Yes. D. Letter D is hill. Hill is in English we call a uh, colina. Ah, okay. That's hill. Yes. What else? Tell me. Tell me. ¿Qué más? Cuéntenme. Cuéntenme. Tell me. What else? Hill. 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 What letter? Letter D. Ah, oh, letter D. Uh, hill. Uh, Colina. Thank you. You're welcome. You can see that. And uh, if you had to select the best destination for your vacations, which of the places would you select? Uh, the beach, the desert, the forest, a mountain, a lake, an island, or the ocean, well, a valley? And so what will be the best destinations for you in your vacations? Yes. Forest teacher. Oh, the forest. Like uh, Chalatenango's um, forest. Yes. Yeah, it's a good destination. Definitely, it's very interesting. I really like it. What else? For me, teacher, uh, the beach and river. The beach and the river. Well, it is definitely great. Um, um, I that's that's very interesting. I like it. All right. For, for yes. me, this the river and the mountain. Ah, the river and the mountains. Yes, I really like it too. the mountains. Yeah, that's okay. I really love that too. It's very nice because you enjoy the trees and also the air, poor air, clean. Wow, that that is uh a uh, paradise and also uh, do you know how to say in english um paisaje in english is called landscape okay. landscape look at the chat look at the chat landscape you know it's a uh, very nice I, I really loved you know looking looking the the landscapes it's a very amazing, amazing experience. So in your vacations, you have to think about it. I love the beach. I love the beach. But what I don't like is that it's very sunny. It's very hot. You're, you know, you get a tan. You know how to say broncearse in English? Like, 
Look at the chat. How do you say pronunciation in English? Get a, get a, get a tan. Get a tan. Yes, when you get a tan, it's like you, um, you know, you can enjoy, you know, this, ese bronceado, as we call tan. You know, we love that. And, um, and but uh, every place is very interesting, especially for visiting. Any comment about these places? Any comment or equation related to these places, guys? No? Yes, no, tell me. Alguna experiencia? No? No experience about these places? No? Hello? Don't let me alone. <laughs> no. 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 Okay, thank you. All right. So let's get ready with the next topic because the, the class is going to be very interesting because we have a conversation. This conversation is about which is larger. I want you to check the following conversation and we're going to watch two important details. The first one is to practice the pronunciation about this vocabulary. And the conversation is between Mike and Wendy. So listen carefully and practice together. It says, here's a geography quiz in the paper. Oh, I love geography. Ask me the questions. Sure, first question. Which country is larger, China or Canada? I know Canada is larger than China. Okay, next. What's the longest river in the Americas? Um, I think it's the Mississippi. Okay, here is a hard one. Which country is more crowded? Monaco or Singapore? Um, I'm not sure. I think Monaco is more crowded. Okay, one more. Which South American capital city is the highest? La Paz, Quito, or Bogota? No, that's easy. Uh, Bogota is the highest? So look at this conversation. This is also, I will, I will share um, the pronunciation about this conversation. So also you can, you can practice uh, this conversation because it's actually very useful. Entonces se las voy a compartir en este momento. Bien, uh, questions about the vocabulary. We're gonna read in both languages. Look at that one. Let me check, let me check. Uh-huh. One second. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure. Okay, so let me check because I have this That's conversation. Um, I was actually trying to send the audio. Here's the quiz in the paper. Oh. Okay, I'm sending you right now this uh, the audio about this conversation so we also can practice. Oh, uh, questions about vocabulary? Yes, teacher. What, what is crowded? Oh, crowded. Crowded is when there are a lot of people. En este caso, cuando decimos que está saturado. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. por ejemplo, dice, okay, look at that one. Follow the reading. Here's a geography oh, quiz in the paper. Poblado. Ajá. Es como oh, muy poblado. Muy poblado, muchas personas. Sobrepoblado. Este país está, así es. Eh, ¿Cuál país está más sobrepoblado? And also you say, here's a geography quiz in the paper. Oh, I love geography. Ask me the questions. Sure, first question. Which country is larger, China or Canada? I know Canada is larger than China. Okay, next. Um, what's the longest river in the Americas? Mm, I think it's the Mississippi. Here's a hard one. Which country is more crowded? Monaco or Singapore? I'm not sure. I think Monaco is more crowded. Okay, one more. Which South American capital city is the highest? La Paz, Quito or Bogota? Oh, that's easy. Bogota is the highest. Aquí nos dice la conversation. Aquí está el... Quiz, en este caso, es como un examen de biografía en el papel. Ahí se lo da como, ahí está el examen. Y le dice, oh, amo la geografía. Pregúntame cualquier cosa. ¿Seguro? Eh, primera pregunta, ¿cuál país es más largo o más grande? ¿China o Canadá? 
lo que sé es que Canadá es más grande que China. Ok, siguiente. ¿Cuál es el río más largo en las Américas? Um, creo que es el Mississippi. Ok, aquí está eh, una difícil. ¿Cuál país es más sa saturado, más poblado? ¿Mónaco o Singapur? No estoy seguro. Creo que Mónaco está más saturado. Ok, una más. ¿Cuál capital de Sudamérica es la más alta? ¿La Paz, Quito o Bogotá? Oh, eso está fácil. Bogotá es la más alta. En este caso, you can see this uh, conversation about which is larger. And also, I will explain you this topic because we will study uh, comparative and superlatives. Y nos vamos a ir a, de una vez a la, a la parte de las comparison and adjectives. Ok, cuando hablamos de comparisons, we are comparing people, animal, and objects. I repeat that. When we use comparatives, we are comparing people, animals, and objects. People, animal, objects. Tres cosas. Personas, animales, y cosas. ¿Y cuál es la función de un adjetivo? ¿Quién me dice in English? What's the function of an adjective? Who wants to help me? El adjetivo dar un calificativo. Ah, okay. okay. So describes, describes uh, people, animals, and ob objects. Object. Okay, that's the main focus about that. And uh, in este caso, pues, los adjetivos, como dicen, califican, give a characteristic acerca de un animal, people, and objects. Animales, personas, y cosas. Y nos dice, un adjective tell us about a person. Nos dice si es attractive, is tall, short, crazy, interesting, ugly, happy, sad, angry, hot, cold, big, huge, short. Y nos dice todos los adjetivos. Ahora bien, hay tres tipos de, de estructuras de los adjetivos. Tenemos los adjetivos normales. Tenemos los comparativos. En inglés se dice comparisons. Tienen conmigo comparisons. 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 Y vienen los Comparisons. superlatives. Digan conmigo superlatives. Superlatives. Excellent. Superlatives. Vamos a empezar con lo suavecito y vamos ahí step by step in this part. In this case, because we, all, we always use English all the time, but with grammars, we have to be like more specific and try to combine English and Spanish. Eh, no sé si les combinamos español también para, para explicar esta estructura o full English. Ustedes mandan. In Spanish, please. <laughs> no, así no vale. Full English, English. Sure. Así no. English, yeah, so we're going to combine both. Do you agree? Both languages? Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. Yes, it's great. That is what we call negotiation. Son buenos negociadores. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's see this part. Which country is larger, Canada or China? In este caso, ¿cuál país es más largo o más grande, Canadá o China? Si ustedes se fijan, dice Canada is larger y luego aparece then. Ese then, ¿qué significa? What's the meaning about then? ¿Qué? 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 Significa ¿Qué? que. We ¿Qué? use specifically then to compare. Este then no lo ocupamos para nada más que solo para comparar. ¿Y qué significa que? Entonces vemos que el adjetivo large ya no dice large, sino que dice larger. Es decir, que está utilizando una estructura comparativa. Veamos el siguiente. Which city has the largest population? ¿Cuál ciudad, es la, cuál, ¿Cuál ciudad tiene la población que es population? The largest, la más grande. Tokyo, Mexico City, or Sao Paulo. Tokyo has the largest population of the, of the three. Es decir, que Tokio tiene la población más grande de los tres. La siguiente. What is the most beautiful mountain in the world? ¿Cuál es la montaña más hermosa del mundo. I think uh, Mount Fuji is the most beautiful. Es decir, que creo que la montaña Fuji es la más hermosa. Pero bien, vamos, vamos a la parte de la estructura. That's what I really care. Adjective. Tenemos long y luego tenemos longer. Y luego tenemos the longest. A ver, quiero explicar algo rápidamente. Cuando usamos comparativos, when we are using comparatives, el adjetivo normal, yo quiero hacer un comparativo en inglés. Cuando el adjetivo es pequeño, eh, se le llama, 
que tiene one syllable. En In inglés we call one syllable. ¿Qué es un syllable? Son las sílabas. Las, a través de las sílabas podemos ir formando palabras. A veces hay, hay palabras que son grandes, tienen una sílaba, tienen dos sílabas, tres sílabas. The, the same thing that we studied at school. Lo mismo que estudiamos en escuela when we're studying Spanish. Entonces, igual pasa con el inglés. Tenemos long, solo tienen una sílaba. Es decir, una, una forma para una palabra. Entonces, cuando el adjetivo eh, es pequeño, nosotros vamos a utilizar la famosa ER. ¿Y qué es esto de ER, teacher? ER, ¿qué es esto? Esto es un agregado que se le da al adjetivo para hacerlo comparativo. ER no tiene sin un, ningún significado, pero para nosotros va a significar más. ¿Qué va a significar ER? Más. Más, right. It's going to have the meaning about more. En este caso, yo digo long y le agrego ER, entonces me va a decir más largo, longer. Eh, entonces, si yo digo, por ejemplo, tall y le agrego taller, ¿qué va a significar? Alto, más alto. Más alto, taller. Si yo quiero decir que es rápido y le agrego eh, ER, faster, ¿va a significar? Más rápido. Más rápido. Más rápido. Así es. Si yo digo, por ejemplo, que está cold, que está helado, yo digo, oh, wow, it's más actually it's colder. Más, la, más, helado. más helado. Más helado, right? Frío, Because helado. it's colder. You know, you, uh, for example, Canada is colder than El Salvador. Decir que Canadá mm -hmm. es más helado que El Salvador. It's colder than El Salvador. Yo digo que, eh, por ejemplo, eh, tenemos... Eh, tengo un familiar que es más pequeño que yo, entonces yo digo en inglés, my cousin is shorter. ¿Qué va a significar shorter? Más pequeño. Más pequeño. Más, right? bajo, más, pequeño. Mm -hmm. más pequeño, that's right. Pero hay adjetivos, por ejemplo, que cuando terminan en una Y, nosotros tenemos que eliminar la Y, le agregamos una I latina y, y la hacemos comparativa, como el que estoy escribiendo en el chat. Vemos que está dry. Dry significa seco. Es decir, de, ya sea de temperatura, de ambiente, seco. Dry. Y vemos que en el comparativo ya le aparece una I latina. Entonces, cuando el adjetivo no tiene ningún, en este caso, ninguna vocal que en inglés es vowel, entonces nosotros automatically le agregamos la I latina más R. Y entonces va a decir drier, que significa más seco. Ok. Entonces, ese es como un ejemplo acerca de dryer. Look at that. Pero vemos también que está un adjetivo que dice big. ¿Qué significa big? What's the meaning about big? Grande. 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 Ok. Grande. Big, right. Cuando el adjetivo tiene estas características, oigan bien. Tiene una vocal, una, eh, tiene una consonante, tiene una vocal y una consonante. Como dice la regla, que el adjetivo es súper pequeño porque solo tiene una consonante, vocal, consonante. Nosotros estamos dentro de la gramática como obligados a agregarle otra consonante en la una que termina. Una consonante más. Exactly. En este caso decimos bigger. Eh, como termina en una G, with ends in a G, solo le agregamos una ER. Entonces decimos bigger. Look at the example. It's bigger. Y ahí vemos el ejemplo. Bigger. Ahora dice más grande. Más grande. Y eh, tenemos así también otra serie de adjetivos. Tenemos, eh, tenemos por ejemplo, el, tenemos un adjetivo child. En este caso, shires, right? Como un poquito más tímido, shire. Tenemos otros adjetivos que son bastante pequeños. Vamos con el famous. ¿Qué pasa con famous? Este, ¿cuántas sílabas tiene? Dos, Two. Two. Ok. Sí, yes, it has Famous tres. Famous. Famous. Ok. Famous so tres sílabas. Yeah, in that case, what we had to do, como este tiene más de dos sílabas, nosotros ya no le vamos a agregar el ER para hacerlo comparativo, sino que le vamos a agregar more. more. More, and more, famous. more famous. Ahora va a decir más famoso. ¿Cómo digo yo en inglés? Más inteligente. 
more intelligent more intelligent yes more intelligent ahí vemos el ejemplo more intelligent look at the look at the example here so we have more intelligent i'm sorry i it's actually switch okay um can you see can you see the presentation yes right entonces decimos que more intelligent como digo yo más atractivo cuando usted diga teacher i, I am more attractive ¿Cómo, cómo sería? More, attractive. more attractive more attractive right Okay, more attractive. Más hermoso, ¿cómo sería? More, more beautiful. More, more beautiful. Um, más emocionante. More, more amazing. More amazing. More that's correct. Yes, that's right. So, and also we can use a lot of um, adjectives that have more than two syllables. Ahora bien, tenemos también dos tipos de adjetivos que a esto no se le va a agregar ninguna ER y no se le va a agregar tampoco ningún more, sino que estos se le llama irregular adjectives. Los irregular adjectives son aquellos adjetivos que tienen una estructura diferente. Por ejemplo, good. Good is, es distinto, right? El better. comparativo de good es? Better. Is better. better. Y en británico better. sería better. It's better. Un, un acento diferente, pero es the same thing. Oh, it's, oh, class, this is important. Imagínense ya la clase en británico. That's a little different, right? Okay, so look at that one. Y tenemos bad. A este no le va a llegar bother, no, ¿verdad? Sino que el comparativo yes. de bad es worse. Worse. Que significa peor. <laughs> si está mal, is bad, is worse. This that is what we call the uh, comparatives. Entonces, vamos con la siguiente. Look at the next part here. This is actually, you know, part of this activities. Um, vamos a ver otro, otro cuadro que nos va a dar como unas clues about this one. Pero veamos los superlativos. Esto me interesa. A ver, ¿quién me explica los superlativos? I need a volunteers. ¿Cómo formamos un superlativo? Agregándole el artículo. Sí. Ah, ¿Y qué artículo es este? Definite article, right? Tenemos indefinite article y en este caso utilizaríamos the definite article. Entonces decimos the y tenemos long. A el artículo le vamos a agregar est cuando este tiene una sílaba. Entonces ahora va a decir the longest. Ahora va a decir el más grande o el más largo. Eh, a diferencia del comparativo, solo le agregamos ER. En el superlativo, usted en vez de la ER le va a agregar EST más D, the, the longest. You know, you know uh, United States is the longest country in the North Side, for example, or Canada is the longest country in the North Side. Luego tenemos drier. Vamos a utilizar la misma regla. Si termina en una Y, pues le vamos a eliminar y le agregamos una I latina. Y le vamos a agregar EST, the driest, el más seco. Y ahora vemos el biggest, que este tiene el nombre de un restaurante, right? The biggest, right? So you can see here in D plus big plus G and EST. The biggest, el más grande. Y para los superlativos, cuando tienen más de dos sílabas, le vamos a agregar the most en el comparativo. We, we used more, but in the case of superlatives, we're going to use the most, right? Because it's different, it's superlatives. So that is actually the way about the superlative form. Uh, it's a little clear, this general information. Yes, you should. Okay, yes. so we will have an extra slide that can help us to, you know, to understand a little, a little bit more about this role. Aquí vemos eh, un poquito la regla de los comparativos. De una sílaba tenemos long, longer. Straight, que significa recto, straighter. Big, grande. Bigger, más grande. Tall, taller. Large, larger. Hot, hotter. Eh, vemos que está la palabra hot. ¿Cómo está conformada hot? Consonant, vowel, consonant. ¿Y qué dijimos cuando yes. el adjetivo tiene una consonante vocal consonante? What happened? Don't, don't Se agrega cons la misma consonante con double la que Yeah, we double the last consonant in the adjectives, as we call in Spanish, 
le agregamos una consonante más en la que termina, como el término en T, entonces dice, y se pronuncia hotter, hotter. It's for American English. No, I said hotter. No, it's hotter. It's American English. Hotter. Y two syllable adjectives. Si tiene, ahí está, miren, dice two syllable adjectives. Es decir, adjetivos de dos sílabas. Honest. More honest. Tenemos ahí happy. En este caso, como termina en una Y, ¿qué dijimos cuando terminaba en una Y? Se cambia la Y por la latina y se agrega R. Exactly. So happier. For comparativos, right? For comparatives. Happier, crazy, crazier. El superlativo sería the craziest, el más loco, right? Narrow, que significa angosto, y en inglés sería narrower, el más angosto. Y tenemos gentle, que es gentil, y si yo digo gentler, más gentil, right? Ahora tenemos three or more syllables, cuando este tiene más de tres sílabas, tres sílabas o más. Y en inglés se pronuncia syllables. Diga conmigo syllables. Syllables. That's better. Syllable. Yeah, thank you. That's better. Es que hay personas que dicen syllable. No, it's syllable. Tenemos mm. ex, expensive. Que significa costoso. More expensive. Más costoso. Expensive. More popular. Más popular. More confident. Más confiado. More dangerous. Más peligroso. More beautiful. Más hermoso. More difficult, más difícil. Y vamos con los irregular adjectives. Aquí tenemos los que yo les comentaba. Cuando es comparativo, si es good, es better. Si es bad, es worst. Si es far, es farther. Si es many, es more. Si es mucho, eh, more es más. Little, poquito, less es menos. Far, lejos, further, más lejos. Entonces vemos ahí que los dos far y farther y far and further los tienen el mismo significado. Entonces tenemos acá eh, esta estructura en general. Pero quiero que vayamos a unos ejercicios y I know that you're ready for this one. It says, look at this one, that you had to compare the adjectives. You had to, in this case, try to add ER, le va a dar ER a estos adjetivos. Quiero que usted me haga ese favor. Please, do me, do me this favor. Do me this, this favor. All right? So, that's why we're going to be doing this. Ok? Así que, pues, vamos a intentarlo. ¿Les parece? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yes. I'm that's, ready, teacher. That's what I love. So, let me share right now, guys, the also the, the picture so you can check in the chat the, the exercise. Se los voy a compartir aquí en el chat mientras ustedes los desarrollan. Y I take advantage checking the attendance list. So uh, you listen to your name and you say press. That's, it's going to be the strategy for this class. Meanwhile, you double check the exercises about the comparative form. And after that, the next class will be started the use of superlatives. Para la siguiente clase también, eh, pues, se estudiará un poquito más enfocado a los superlativos, pero es mucho más fácil. It's actually easier to check the comparative form. So you say taller, faster, crazier, easier, taller, shorter, colder, bigger, slower, narrower, crazier, you know, funnier, and also some other adjectives. Y también los superlativos, los comparativos que son de más de dos sílabas, like, you know, more interesting, more fascinating, more terrible, more beautiful, more attractive, also some other structures that we are using in this part. One second, guys. Remember, if you have questions about the vocabulary, please do me the favor to um, ask questions about vocabulary. Teacher, what's the meaning about this word? But teacher, how do you say this word in English? Or oh, what can I do to check this part? Or also, what can I do to work in this exercise? Tienen preguntas, pues háganlas. Y pues yo les ayudo con esto, okay? Um, help me with that part. 
So if you have questions, you have a freedom to ask questions in this way. Yes? Yes, yes? Yes, you can. Yes, tell sure. me. I have a question. Oh, oh tell sorry. me, tell me. Uh, what, is, what is the comparison, comparison of SAT? SAT, eh, como decíamos que SAT is, eh, es un, un kind of, like we say, sadder. A comparative of SAT. Let me, let me write it here. No sé si ya lo pueden ver en el chat o no sé sadder, si. SADER, double, double D. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's, that's with the way. So as we call SADER. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Y SADER with double D. Como en este caso, pues, eh, tiene la regla de consonante, vocal, consonante. Entonces nosotros tenemos que agregarle otra eh, consonante en la que termina. That's the way. Okay, look at this. Okay, are you ready? Yes, note? Yes. Yes, teacher. Excellent, that's what I love. That's the attitude, guys. You know, you're very smart. It, this is easy for you. Let's compare it. What about the first one? What is the first one? Stoller. 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 And that is a great pronunciation too. And is number two. Shorter. 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 So you say shorter. 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 That's correct. Look at that one. And also we have the next one that is old. Older. 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 That's correct. That is older. Great job. So that's or, what I love. Or, or and what about younger? Younger. Younger. And the pronunciation is younger. 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 Teacher, I have a question. Is tell me, more tell me. Younger, is more younger or younger? Ah, uh, younger. It's a lot. Oh, so people can use also like more jones, like more, more common. And uh, fíjense que para esta estructura es como un tipo irregular, porque tendría pues que en este caso... El comparativo is younger. In English grammar, so it's used like young, younger. We add ER at the end of the word. It's, it's used as one syllable. It shares your microphone now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My mistake here. Sorry for that. Okay, so the next one is hot. What is the comparative? Harder. Harder. Hotter. 
Jowli. Letter T. Jowli letter. Okay, look at the chat. Okay. Oh, that's right. So in that case, we say hotter, and when it's cold, it's colder. Colder. Hotter. Colder. What about fast? Faster. Faster. Oh, faster. 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 That's right. And the last one. Slower. 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 Right? Yes. 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 Teacher, en ese caso, como es eh, doble V, ¿verdad? Por eso no se duplica eh, la misma palabra, porque. O, o será porque tienen las dos, la S y la L primero. Ah, exacto. Si usted se acuerda, la regla anterior dice que debe tener una consonante, vocal consonante. Aquí tiene dos consonantes, que es S en L. Por eso es que no aplica. Y en el caso de old, si ustedes se fijan que dice older, eh, el orden es diferente porque va a una vocal y dos eh, consonantes. Entonces tampoco aplica esa regla ahí. Sí. Tiene que ir sí, sure. vocal, consonante, vocal, consonante. Yes. One question. Tell me. Older, older is the same elder. Mm, uh, no, it's different. No. In este caso, old yes. is an adjective. Y elder is, is a noun. Elder significa anciano. Ah, uh, es que como old, yo estuve buscando y también aparecía como un ir, ir, irregular adjectives. Old. Yes. En este caso. Aparecía es... como elder y aparecía the eldest. Ah, en este caso cuando ocupe tal vez elder, pero el comparativo de old es older. Es is unique in this case. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Huh? Okay, so veamos el siguiente ejercicio because it's important to focus about this part and let's give a click. And by the way, do you have a question about the words like in hair? Do you know what is a hair? A hair is faster than a snail. Uh, do you know what a hair is? In English, it's like liebre. It's like a it's family mm -hmm. of rabbits. It's a hair. Yes. yes. And what is a snail? Caracol. Caracol. Yes. Caracol. That is a, that is. Liebre y el caracol. Hell yeah, like a tail. <laughs> uh, it's a kind of mollusk with a single spiral shell into which the, the whole body can be withdrawn. That's what we call it a, a snail. Look at the next one. It's a regular barrel. I'm sorry? What? It's a regular barrel. You say adjectives? A regular adjective or what? The regular adjective is good, better. Ah, exactly. Yes, it's, uh, it's yes. The comparative of good is better, and the superlative is the best. That's that's what we call. And um, let me check here the the attendance list. One second, I need to share with you guys the the vocabulary. Let me help you with that. Les voy a compartir este estas oraciones. One second. Ok, work in this exercise, please. Uh, I send it to you. Se los acabo de mandar por el, por el chat. Mientras voy a, uh, hoy sí, a habilitar lo que es uh, the attendance list. One second, please.
Okay, you listen to your name and you say present. Let's see the next one. Um, let's see. Amanda Jamilet, chicas. Amanda Jamilet, chicas. It's not here. Andrea Gabriela Maravilla. Present. Andrea. Yes, Andrea. Okay. Thank you. Um, Brenda Liliana Quintanilla. Present. Uh, Carlos Edgardo Cruz. Carlos Edgardo Cruz. It's not here. Uh, Carmen Lisette Santillana. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Antonio Calderón. Present teacher. Uh, Ivan Ibrahim Ramirez. S-A-M. Uh, Ivan Ibrahim Ramirez. It's not here. Uh, Jennifer Tatiana N, Gutierrez. N, la última N. Jennifer Tatiana Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody has the microphone. The microphone. Eh, 2019. <laughs> no, no, okay, she's in a well had the microphone. Okay, let's let's continue. Um Jennifer Tatiana Gutierrez. Jorge Alberto Rivera. Jorge. Okay, Jose Alberto Enrique. Present teacher. Okay. Present. And Jose Alexander Hernandez. Jose Alexander Hernandez. Uh, Karen Elizabeth Bernal. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Karina Alejandra Aquino. Karina, hello. Uh, Carla Lisette Martinez. Present. Uh, Carla Stephanie Rivera. Carla. Uh, Catherine Iracema Vialta. Present. And Leticia Jaide Flores Lopez. Leticia Jaide. Eh, Linda Beatriz López. Present. Thank you. Luis Eduardo Méndez. I'm here. Nice. Eh, Mayra Xiomara Guevara. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, María Dolores García. Present teacher. Thank you. Maritza Elizabeth Rojas. Present teacher. Thanks. Melissa Stephanie Linares Ruquia. Present. Thanks. Nelson eh, Rodimiro Pineda. Present teacher. Thanks. Osmin Vidal Rivera Baños. Present teacher. Thanks. Romeo Vladimir Rosales Alvarado. Present. Eh, Sara Elisa Bellos Hernández. Present. Y Wendy Paola López. Present teacher. Thanks. Yolanda del Carmen Hernández. Present teacher. Thanks. Okay, so nobody's missing. I guess no, That's right. Okay, so are you ready with the next part? Let's see, somebody wrote in the chat what it says. Ah, Karina Alejandra Aquino. Let's see. Let me check the attendance list. Aquino, yeah, okay, she's there. I think she's uh, getting some problems with the microphone like that. Okay, vamos con el ejercicio. We're ready to practice this part here. Okay, what about big? Bigger. 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 Okay, bigger, that's correct. Double G, right? Double G, bigger. What about small? Smaller. 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 Okay. What about fat? Fatter. 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 
fatter. Okay, fatter. it's a uh, double T or one T. Double, double T. T. Double, double T. T. Yes, it's fatter. You know that's um, double T. That's good. What about thin? Thinner. Thinner. Yeah. Or thinner. Thinner. What is the pronunciation? Thinner. Oh, thinner. 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 Es thinner. como para decir delgado. Thinner. Thinner. En este caso, si es el, es el comparativo, si es, eh, en este caso, el, la estructura normal, pues no cambia, doesn't change. Thin, thinner. En este caso, este es un tipo de adjetivo eh, un poco irregular. Porque, por ejemplo, para los adjetivos, esto se le llama adjetivos del tipo 1, que terminan en consonante, vocal consonante, Recuerdan que debemos doblar la consonante al final, ¿verdad? En este caso, eh, este es un caso ex excepcional, porque si ustedes se fijan, pues está dos consonantes, una vocal y una consonante. Pero para este sí se hace el cambio. Miren qué interesante, es un tipo de adjetivo irregular. Look at that. Double N. Double N. Yes. Y, en, y fíjense que en old es distinto. Fíjense que, que interesante es que la forma de old es, eh, se le agrega ER. Pero en este caso, el, el de thin es thinner. Si ustedes lo pueden buscar en internet, lo encontrarán que aparece con eh, que se le agrega otra N de más. Es un poco de, de los cambios estructurales de gramática. Pero no se preocupen porque es digamos algo que usted va como adaptándose por ejemplo hay unas reglas que en una se aplica así en otras no pero a medida que usted va, va jugando con estas reglas pues las va haciendo bastante natural yo me acuerdo que decía hey pero si la regla dice esto ¿por qué tengo que agregarle esto? así dice la gramática y si esto así dice la gramática entonces la gramática inglesa tiene esas variantes pero es mucho más fácil que nuestra gramática nuestra gramática español es de las más difíciles porque es, es un sistema como las, las excepciones de nuestra, de nuestra gramática. Así es. De hecho, este, este por ejemplo, thinner es una excepción gramatical, de, 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 en este caso, de los comparativos. Pero en nuestra gramática, nuestra gramática española es especial. Es, es muy completa. Es, nuestra gramática tiene un sistema muy interesante. So that's why um, we should feel proud because Spanish is one of the best languages around the world. Not the most spoken language, but it's one of the best languages and also because the grammar is very important. La, nuestra gramática es mucho más compleja que la gramática inglés. So we can say that. Okay, and uh, we were saying that the thin is thinner. What about happy? Happier. Happier. ¿Y qué pasa con la Y? What happened with the Y? Se convierte a latina. Y se agrega siempre Yeah, it's substitute or replaced. Substitute or replaced by I plus ER. It's happier. And also we have here the next one that is um sad. What, what about sad? Sadder. Sadder, Sadder right? Double D. Yeah, double D. That's cool. So double D in this case. And what about good? Better. 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 Uh-huh. Y los británicos dicen vetted. No, this is vetted. Vetted. Instead of saying better, it's vetted. Eh, como sabemos, la T americana es como suena como una R. Better. Um, y la británica es como con T. Vetted. Entonces, es como T, T. T fuerte. Like, like, like Twitter. Ah, Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Ah, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. It's Twitter. Eh, por ejemplo, father, father, que en este caso es en americano, papá. Los americanos dicen, oh, it's my father, it's my father, oh, it's my brother, my brother, uh, my brother, we say brother. Um, so that's, son variantes, en, más que todo en pronunciación. El acento que es un poquito también, un poquito retador. But es lo mismo, en, en inglés británico, el americano, is the same. Cambien algún vocabulario, algunas palabras que pueden cambiar según el lugar, pero el inglés americano, el británico, is the same. 
eh, bueno, he trabajado también por, con, con británicos y he trabajado con americanos por años y pues es it's actually the same. So the only one difference is the accent. El acento es lo único que pues ahí nos cambia. La gramática is the same. A veces el vocabulario cambia, depende de la región. This is the vocabulary we use. In other Spanish countries, they use other vocabulary. It's again normal for all of us. Vamos con la siguiente. Vamos a hacer el cambio. We're going to make the change about this. A tall, old, short, heavy, young, intelligent, beautiful, hot, and big, easy. Try to, you know, help me with this part, please. So you explain me what happened with this exercise. Look at this part. Yes, no, tell me, tell me. Alan is taller than Olivia. Okay, and good pronunciation is actually great. Okay, it's taller. Uh, number next one, volunteer. Diana is older than Alan. Older, yes, thank you. Next, Olivia. Olivia is shorter than Diana. That's perfect. What about the next one? Olivia is stronger than Diana. Um, and uh, Alan. Olivia is more intelligent than Alan. Alan. Mm, heavy. Alan is heavier than Libya. Okay, do we change why or not? Change why? Yeah. Ah. Or, uh, for I. Okay, we, we replace why by I plus ER. That's the way. Excellent. Okay, Libya is younger than Diana. Okay, and the next one, Libya. Livia is more intelligent than Alan. It's more intelligent. Okay, good. Next. Anna is more beautiful than Livia. Okay, next. Spain is hotter than Canada. Canada. Mm -hmm. Canada. Yes. Um, hey, next, next, Russia is bigger yes. than Italy. Russia is the, uh, bigger mm -hmm, than Italy. And the next one, I can't see. Can you see the last one? No, no. No. Um, let's see. Uh, I will try to make it a small. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. What about now? Oh, I'm sorry, I need to make it a small. Mm -hmm. Comparative article is this one, I guess. Uh, taller, taller. Let me see. I think it's going to work. Look at this. Mm -hmm. What about this one? Can you see that? The last one? Look at this one. Yes. yes. What? Oh, what yes. is that? Yes. Italian. Italian. Yeah. Uh, than Greek. So in that case, is easier. The context is about life. So perhaps in Italy, it's like easier than Greek. So that's mean that perhaps the context and everything around is easy or more adaptable. Because if we try to translate exactly the word, it, it wouldn't make sense. So that's why we are using, in this case, these kind of comparatives. So don't forget that we have been studying the use of comparatives and also the superlatives are the ones that are called with, uh, with as we call in English, we don't compare, we show the level of something is superior. 
For example, and let's compare uh, something in El Salvador using superlatives. For example, El Salvador is the smallest country in Central America. Um, El Salvador is one of the most secure countries in Central America. So because nowadays we are like trying to have more, a more secure country. So we could say that El Salvador is one of the most safest or secured countries around the world. El Salvador has one of the most typical, delicious, more the del most delicious food in Central America. So we have one of the most delicious. Esto es cuando queremos comparar, por ejemplo, eh, otros lugares que también tienen un nivel superior. Por ejemplo, yo digo El Salvador, veamos el chat, is one of the most um, secure uh, countries in Central America, por ejemplo. Ahí está, miren. Eh, cuando decimos que hay un grado de superioridad, eh, decimos, eh, por ejemplo, una vez, is the, is the tallest, is the shortest, is the fastest, is the richest, is the poorest. Y si queremos comparar algo que está junto a otra situación, yo voy a decir, El Salvador is one of the most secure countries in Central America. O El Salvador has one of the most typical, delicious, typical food in Central America. Entonces vamos comparando, pero de modo superlativo. That's one of the points. Okay, students. So in, in further classes, you will be studying a little bit more about superlatives. And um, the purpose about this one is that you can practice. Ya que pues in a real practice, we can do that one, guys. Así que I hope that you will enjoy, especially, you know, this time to practice. Así que pues sigan estudiando, sigan esforzándose. Worse, worse. Ah, Messi is the greatest of all times. Francisco, oh my God. A uh, algunos no les va a gustar si le van a CR7. Cristiano Ronaldo, okay. <laughs> I understand that point. Right. It's <laughs> okay, example. students. So it has been a pleasure. Ha sido un placer. Eh, espero que puedan seguir, seguir aprendiendo eh, inglés, que sigan fortaleciendo sus habilidades. Espero verlos más adelante por ahí en nivel advanced, ya en en otros contenidos así que espero pues que la pasen bien y eh, tomorrow we'll have a different teachers that will join you in this process okay so thank you guys and have a beautiful night to all of you thank you teacher thank, thank you, you. Nice. thank you so much thank you. bye bye night, teacher. Thank you, you too thank you so much have a beautiful night to all of you guys <laughs>